Hi everyone, welcome back to our tidbits. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can integrate a shape optimization into your Chroma 3D workflows. The previous video showed you how to do a cross-section optimization in Chroma 3D. And this time we'll be now taking that one truss that we used in the previous video and adding some uh, parameters onto our upper girder to basically control the pitch. We have a couple of parameters here you can see that allow us to control the position of our pitch. We can control the height of the left side of our gird upper girder. We have a slider that controls the height of our pitch and also a slider that controls the uh, height of our right upper girder. For this exercise, the length of our truss is going to stay static and we're going to be only optimizing for these three, four parameters. As per usual, we're performing all the geometric exercises in Grasshopper and then collecting everything into four separate branches. One which basically contains our lower girder, our upper girder, our verticals and our diagonal elements. And using some uh, list organization, we can then organize them into separate element IDs. In this case, we are all we're applying a SHS cross section, which I've defined here using the cross section component, and making sure that our diagonal member D is uh, a truss element. So, for setting up a uh, simple shape optimization, we're going to be using a simple objective, a single objective optimization. Sorry, in this case, Galapagos, which is which comes with Grasshopper. You can find this component here under Galapagos. And so we have our model assembled and we've analyzed the model and we're taking the results of the displacement, the maximum displacement as our objective or our fitness here for our optimization procedure. So the value that we're optimizing here is for example, this one, which is currently 0.07 centimeters. And let's take these and move them over to where our initial sliders are at the start of our definition. And we can see that our genomes are plugged into all of these four sliders. So when we start the Galapagos uh, optimization procedure, basically it will run through and uh, go through many, many different iterations of these four different sliders. We are also using the model view and the uh, beam view to then preview the results live during the optimization process. And I've got it at the moment set to just show our utilization mapping. So now let's open Galapagos by double clicking. You'll see a window pops up. And our main concern that we are looking at in this case is that we want to minimize our fitness. In this case, reduce our displacements. For example, you also have the option to maximize it, but it's important for this exercise that we're minimizing our fitness. If you're interested to read more about how Galapagos works and, and how it integrates evolutionary theory, please use these links here where David Rutten explains in quite detail how this entire procedure works. We'll be using the default settings for our optimization procedure at the moment. So let's now go into solvers. I'll just move this over here and we can simply start the solver. For the case of this exercise, I'm going to simply click display all genes in the random viewport. And now you can see all the many different iterations that are being sent to Grasshopper, calculated in Karamba, and then the results are then displayed here on the bottom. So it goes through many generations to go through this evolutionary process of optimization. And hopefully you would see these values start to reduce as we achieve uh, an optimal shape for our truss. In this case, we would expect the optimal shape to have a pitch in the middle and basically a symmetrical truss shape is the optimal shape that we would be hoping for. Now I'm just going to run through and skip the optimization process a little bit so that you can see. 
the display here allows you to basically also control the rendering to Rhino. So if we click on the middle, which is the default, it only displays the best streams or best results in the current generation. So it doesn't update our Rhino viewport. And the last setting allows us to do not display any in the Rhino report. And often you might want to actually use this, these two because it actually increases the, uh, or basically it uh, optimizes the time that you need to run the optimization procedure because it's no longer needed to render the geometry in Rhino itself. Once the optimization procedure has finished, it will either stop automatically or you can click on the stop solver. In this case, I'll just click on the stop solver here and we can go through the new generations. In this case, we're on the 25th generation. As you can see, the results differ very, very little, but we can go through and basically reinstate these settings back into our Grasshopper and subsequently our Rhino viewport by clicking on reinstate. If we go to the first generation, like one of the first generations where we have the worst results, we can also then also click on one of these and display the results as such. But bear in mind, once you click OK or cancel, all these results are basically lost and you would have to run the entire optimization procedure once again. There's also options to basically record all the data and save it so that you can actually then use it and uh, apply these uh, slider settings to the subsequent four sliders that you see here. So let's now click on one of these more optimal genomes and reinstate it and click OK. And that is basically how we do a simple single objective optimization using Galapagos to do a shaped optimization of this truss. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.